I don't know. Do we go into that topic? Do you want to start? I mean, we can. Okay, let's. You intro it. What did you have written out as far as uh? Yeah. Well, so we had the um, so our most viral post got I think it was over fifty thousand comments. I I'm I'm detoxing social media. I'm taking a break from it. Oh, I'm not. Yeah, I know you're not. <laughs> I'm all well, over. One it. <laughs> only one of us can detox at a time. <laughs> I, I should probably. Well, yeah, I think you've done every detox session because, like, <laughs> I've been hard on it for a while. Yeah. And I should probably stop because, I don't know, do we swear on this? Do we swear? Or should I just bleep it out? I mean, it's up to you. Okay. I can bleep it out. But I, I said in front of my kid and my mom the other day while talking about social media. Yeah. I didn't call anyone that. I just said, well, someone's calling me that. And it's like, that's fine. Well, when you're reading, when you're reading about people calling you that name, yeah. Like, it, yeah. It, it's going to pop out. Mm-hmm. I was talking to my UPS guy because uh, a UPS guy runs a rural route about 100 stops a day. The city guys do 200 stops a day. And I was telling him, I was like, when you see a UPS guy sprinting in and out of the truck, he's trying to do 200 in a day. I got to do 700. So getting out of the truck, like, it's like, it's not a matter of sprinting. It's just like, it's not a tenable number. You're not going to do 700 stops getting in and out of the truck the whole time. And I told him, I was like, I'm enjoying it because, like, a lot of these people have no idea what they're talking about. And it's like, I'm going to get a box of crayons out to explain it to you and try not to eat them when I'm trying <laughs> to show it to you. And he thought that was hilarious because yeah. I was like, these people can say whatever they want about my policy as far as like do you charge when you get out of the truck they can have whatever opinions they want they have no and part of it's my fault in the post i should have given more context about different market areas and different policies but see, i think you make a lot of assumptions like you're assuming people read and they didn't no no because i give a pretty good explanation no you had a post where you like really yeah. nailed down what was going on and then you could read the comments and there were some warriors in the comments who were like, did you read his description? <laughs> right. Yeah. And no, they did not. No. But okay. Yeah. 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 So I made, I made an yeah. outline. So, so we got, um, we got f- over 50,000 posts on this uh, or 50,000 comments on this post that we did. And it was just this, this mm-hmm. really binary um, post where Thor's in the cab, he's driving, he's just about to tip a perfectly placed can that you know he can grab, he can cycle, put it down. You know, I, I think we, we call that we call that fifteen seconds. Yeah, what you, if everything's perfect from yeah. the time you get on your brakes to stopping to grabbing the car to lifting it up, mm-hmm. cycling it, setting it down, getting yep. back up to speed? That's fifteen seconds. Basically, it's exactly as you requested when you provided the cart. You know, we're gonna provide the cart. Just put it in, put all your content in the cart, and then put it to the curb. That's that. If you're that's on it. an automated route, that's the expectation. Yep. But even reload guys out there would prefer that. Yeah, 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 no. So anyway, we'll, we'll but, talk but, about the rear load yeah, guys. That's different. Yeah. Okay, so he had this binary thing where he looks at this cart and he goes, "Look at this can. I can tip this can in a second. And then he like gets up to speed, and then he pulls up to this next cart, and this next cart's just a disaster. I mean, it's got garbage by the side of it. It's piled up around it. So you're having a hard time grabbing it. You lift it, and then you got to get out. And I think you. How many times did you cycle the arm? Uh, twice. I think I just cycled it twice, but it. There was a brief moment where I turned the bag, and I should have made it more obvious, but I turned the bag where there was holes in it, where something had chewed or torn into it. Right. And no one noticed that. Like, I tried to make it obvious, but I really should have, like, held it up to their face and be like, this is why we don't want stuff on the ground. Just on a cleanliness factor, but no one saw that. They just saw, does he get out or not? So we, we have tablets, and we mark all down everything down that we're doing so like extra charges like you say how many times you had to lift the container after the first lift another button we have is we uh it's called janitor cleanup so if it's not bagged and tied and we're like picking up loose garbage Mm -hmm. off the ground which use your imagination what goes in a garbage bag that all ends up on the ground when people don't care they don't tie their bags you know the wind picks up animals come out so so anyways so you had a janitor cleanup situation too on that one yeah Okay, and then so so it's binary, right? So he he has he poses a simple question. He goes, "Should this person say pay the same amount of garbage as this person?" And I mean, fifty thousand wow. comments. Wow. Oh yeah. But Dude. that's the divide. Yeah. Because you you have so many people on automatic routes mm-hmm. that are just blown away that you're cleaning that up. Yeah. And then you have so many people that are on routes where yeah they just the 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 boss the boss that drives around in the pickup. 
that doesn't doesn't pick yeah. anything up mm-hmm. tells his employees, "You guys clean everything up. I don't want any phone calls." Mm-hmm. And that's the guy that lets the customers tell him how to run the company. Right. It's like, well, the customers are telling me I should do. Well, this. it's really the guy that doesn't want to run a company. That's true too. I mean, he doesn't want he doesn't yeah. want to run a good company. Yeah, and that's it's just like throw it all out. I'm going to send guys that are going to clean it up. Yep, that's a common accusation. That's one of my pet peeves. Where I keep saying it to you when we have our conversations on the phone, where it's just like, uh, who who runs this company? The customer or the owner? Well, okay. So here's another problem, though. So like, a lot of these companies are small. You have to have somebody on the phones to negotiate with these customers too. Because, like, the phones is a big deal. So, like, if you don't take it, you have to have somebody good on the phone yeah. to, like, negotiate with these customers. And, like, we fortunately have a person that's good on the phone. Yeah. But we didn't always have somebody that's good on the phone. So, like, you as a driver know exactly what you need to do to, like, clean up your route. Mm-hmm. But you have to have somebody in the office that you can work with that will do that with the customers. Yeah. To get the to get where you're at now compared to where you were 18 months ago is – a complete restructuring of skilled labor or just skilled employees, whether they're skilled operators of a vehicle or skilled at the back end in the office, whether it's interacting with customers. And like, I joke, but I can actually get along with a customer on a curbside. Like there's definitely a few face to faces I've had with people. They thought you were the nicest boy I've ever met. And it's like, it's cause you're cool. I can get along with those. Uh, but Definitely Casey would be the better one. Casey being the back-end office guy, he's the better one to be answering phones. Yep. Because I'd probably be a little too aggressive. I, I, I have the mentality where it's like I have two rules I always say to other people when I'm explaining garbage. Uh, you don't get to tell me how to do the job, and you don't get to make the job harder. Because if I'm the one driving the truck, and I'm the one that's going to be operating around heavy equipment that could kill me or maim me, I get to decide how the garbage is picked up. Yep. You know, and even I'm guilty of like doing some stupid stuff, trying to get stuff up into a truck. You know, I've had those reels posted too. Okay, so we had the social media post. It got over over fifty thousand comments, and the comments were atrocious. Yes, I would say the majority of the comments were derogatory. Yeah, and I mean, like, and it's social media, so like you have to take that with a grain of salt, right? Like, yeah, bring out the extremes and people. You're gonna have bandwagon effect. I mean, there's a lot that goes into like a fifty thousand comment viral post right but our takeaway was these people have no idea what it's like to do our job they have no idea what it's like to run a company yeah i mean they truly are just like they're they're truly just like almost bullying a driver being like you're a janitor clean everything up quit complaining about your job oh there's so many takeaways looking at that post where it was um okay clearly they never read the description and clearly they don't understand like the difference of a market like because they were talking about tax dollars for what they pay for with their tax dollars. I'm like, we're a private company. Tax dollars has nothing to do yeah, you with had the this. Full, you had the full spectrum of. Yeah, like everything was wrong. And I tried to clear it up in like future reels. But these the reels that I followed up with, it was like a barrage of like six or seven. Like, oh, here's the common misconceptions. Here's common misunderstandings. And those are like maybe 5,000 views yeah. compared to the one that's got like eight and a half million on Instagram. Like just bonkers. And. You know, it's like, okay, they don't understand, like, there's differences between uh, government or s- a private enterprise providing the service. They don't understand, like, the scalability of route sizes or risk or safety or any of this. I even had people, like, the majority of them were complaining that I just made, I try to be as objective as possible, saying, look at this one, look at that one, look at this one. Which one do you think should pay more? And they're like, you sound like a lazy POS, a blah, blah, blah. I'm like, bro, I just try to ask a question. Yeah, you objectively ask, should yeah. these two people pay the same? And what people were extrapolating from it was you were this lazy side load yeah. driver that yeah. doesn't want to get out of the truck. Yeah, yeah. And it's like that's – and and I was trying to like – and I, I it's hard to like pose that question without leading them on. But the bigger question was, if someone uses more of a service, do they p- pay more for a service? Like, if I go and order um, a small fry from someplace and I get upset I don't get a large fry, everyone would be like, you're out of your, your mind. That's the container concept. The container concept. Yeah, yeah, so, like, you have a container. The container's the same size for everyone. Everyone gets to use their container. So the idea that, like, you fill your container and then 
you yeah. got to put stuff around your container. Yeah. And then anything you get around the container is free, but you pay for the container yeah. that you put the stuff in. Yeah. That, that makes no sense on its face. Yeah, particularly when you're in the industry and you realize, like, uh, there is your residential toters or carts that are 95s or ni- – like, what, are they, what's the, what do you call them, 95s or 96s? Ni- 95s, 95s. Yeah. yeah, I've – some whatever. So there's – and I'll put up an image of what I mean. So there's that. And they, people think, oh, that just gives me unlimited access to a service, not realizing if you're in the industry, like there's one-yard dumpsters, two-yard dumpsters, threes, fours, sixes, eights. And then it's like, at what point do you get a roll-off? Because there's times I've rolled up to a place where I'm like, this could have been at least a six-yard dumpster, if not a roll-off. Like someone moves out of the house after an estate sale, and I'll put that p- picture up too because I got that. I was like, that's a 15-minute stop time just to keep reloading a 95 and keep cycling it. Like right. this, this should have been like a $200 dumpster temporary order. Well, and back to the container concept. Yeah. And this concept holds not only for side load. It holds for rear load, too. The idea is that we have these containers. Everybody has a container that's the same size. If one's not enough, you can get more containers. Mm-hmm. Like, we'll bring you more. But you put everything in the container, and then the truck's – capable of lifting the container the container has an attached lid the container's pretty large pretty heavy it doesn't blow over like it's the ideal it's the ideal thing to put the garbage in and it's the easiest way for us to get it in our truck because like we're ultimately like in the shipping business right yeah like we take your garbage from your residence and then we get it to a transfer station or a landfill you're not a janitor we're I'm, not a janitor business. I I am in I am in the shipping business. <laughs> okay, yeah, I don't think people understand that. Well, some <laughs> people think you're in the janitor business. Yeah, and I I don't even think like a, a janitor exists that like picks garbage up off the ground. I mean, like even right. janitors like people put you know like if you're at a ball game and you have waste, yeah. you don't just throw it on the ground. And then, like, think, oh, there's a janitor that's going to come around and pick up my stuff off the ground. There it's are like, those no, people, though. <laughs> they you, should take it, yeah. you take it to the waste bin, put it in there, and then yeah. the janitor comes around and services the waste bins. Yeah. You yeah. know, he's collecting no different than we are. Except there are people that will leave a theater, dump their popcorn out, and be like, oh, there's someone paid to clean this up. Yeah. Like, I'm creating jobs. And those people, I will – they are the ones commenting on our posts and I will not do anything to serve or like cater to that mentality. So there are, there is, there is a group that picks up uh, garbage, if you want to call it or litter off the ground. And it's people that donate their time and they go on the highways yeah. and they clean up the, all the litter in the ditches on the highways. But other than that, I can't think of an example of where customers put garbage, refuse, rubbish, whatever you want to call it on the ground. And somebody goes around and picks it up. Yeah. Yeah, well, we we've all seen those members of society where it's like I'll I'll throw it on the ground, or I'll just throw it on the floor in the theater, or I'll just not put my shopping cart away because like this is all someone else's job. And and I'll I'll put I'll put something in there too. Like if you've been doing that for twenty years, we're not like attacking you by no means. Like there are yeah. a lot of garbage providers out there that say just put it out and yeah. we'll take it. Put it out and we'll take it. And if you've been right. doing that for twenty years, right. nothing against you. I yeah. I am not I'm not saying you're a bad person or anything all i'm saying is when your garbage provider decides he's going to come to 2023 and -hmm. realize that like he needs to staff his company and pay employees livable wages and provide them health insurance because they're essential workers yeah he's going to determine that you need to put your garbage in a container that our truck can empty and that's that's one of those critical things we need to go back like there's some people that do put trash out on the ground just thinking, oh, that's fine. It's normal policy. It, and they're not the same ones that are like making a mess at a ball game or a theater or shopping carts scattered through the line. They're not all the same people, but there are some that are commenting. But what I what we should do is frame it where, and I've said this before, just not in a podcast format. I I look at when a company, a responsible company, for garbage is making decisions. Uh, the ones that are like your cowboy wild west type operations will just think, make decisions with like customer first and then them themselves second. And that's it. That that's the dichotomy they use. 
And I keep having the theory that it should be when you make a policy, is it uh, company, customer, the community, and employee? There's four parties involved. Because like company employee, it's like, well, should they be in the same branch? I'm like, not necessarily. Because we've seen guys make policies that affect the po company positively, but then they wonder why their employees keep quitting or why they can't keep good staff around. But why, why would a company give everything to the customer? Because uh, they're afraid the, the it's probably a competitive market. And they're it's a afraid. competitive market. Yep, it's going to be a competitive. How do you get the most customers? Give oh, the most to the yep, customer. Yep. And, yeah. And what, what you don't realize is, as a customer, when you do business with a company that gives it all to the customer, it makes for a poor work environment. And a community in general. Community in general. Yeah. Because, like, I, it's not like uh, we, we recognize it. It's not like uh, someone's never going to have extra trash that's outside the cart. Uh, if I see it, I prefer it to be bagged and tied, you know, or some sort of additional container that makes it cleanly. But if you're regularly just telling people, like, you don't even have to use a cart. Like, there's, there's policies I've seen where it's like, ah, eh, you could use a cart or you cannot use a cart, whatever, just get it to the curb. And it won't always be bagged or it'll be kind of loosely strewn about whether they put it that way or animals got access to it and made a mess. Now you're affecting the community. Because, like, there, I've seen one where someone just threw a pile of styrofoam and cardboard out and then it blew all over the place before I got there. And it was up in the neighbor's yard. Right. The neighbor wasn't our customer, but our policy, and maybe this is our, like, we, sh maybe this is something where, oh, maybe we should sit down and come up with, ideas that make it less likely for that to happen because for whatever reason we let that customer know that oh yeah you can throw a styrofoam and cardboard out next to the cart we'll service all of it well and the customer would probably say we didn't know we couldn't do that yeah and that's it, so it, it it is a two-way street where yeah we prefer it all in the cart in that one instance like we probably should be educating people to call in and say like hey i got this pile that's going to be blown like once the sun comes up and the wind starts blowing, that styrofoam is going to be in my neighbor's yard. And that they're not that neighbor's not our customer, but our policy created a scenario where trash is in their yard. So that goes back to like company, customers, uh, community, and employee.